Hi! So, this will be my review of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I will keep this very, very brief just because I know, or I'm sure, everyone is deadly sick of hearing about it because it's been talked about so, so much. And to be honest, I'm quite sick of talking about it and hearing about it. So, I have a lot of opinions on this book, but I will keep them very, very brief. So this will be a quick review of, you know, what I thought about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. So I will start by saying that I've only read the script to this play and I've not seen it on stage as it is meant to be experienced. Therefore, any opinions I have are completely, you know, textual. Personally, I think it's difficult to form a coherent opinion uh, on something that I feel like I haven't experienced the whole thing. So, well, anyway, opinions have been formed. I will not keep this up through the whole video, by the way. So this is the first book in that Potterverse. Can you say that? Potterverse? Or did I just make that up? Probably not. Anyway, this is like the first book uh, that is set in the Harry Potter world that I have not given five star stars and I feel slightly blasphemous about it. Like, it's weird. I actually went into it thinking that I couldn't possibly give it anything but the highest rating just because it's Harry Potter. Um, but in the end, I just can't do it with a good conscience. It does still get as many as four stars just because it's been absolutely lovely to be able to be excited about a new Harry Potter book again, even if I don't think that it should be marketed as like the eighth Harry Potter story. It's, I'm sorry, it's just not. Um, and because it's been so great getting reacquainted with my favorite characters again. That said, it does have its flaws. First of all, after all the discussions about J.K. Rowling not having enough diversity in her books and all the talk around the fact that she kind of seemed to add the whole bit about Dumbledore being gay after the fact instead of just like putting it in the books, <laughs> like textually, uh, if that was her intention for him to be gay, uh, I just really expected to see a love relationship between Albus and Scorpius. I wasn't long into the book before I thought I saw something to that effect. Um, so I just kind of assumed that that's where it was going. Like, I assumed that, well, they're teenage boys and there's this, like, a subtle sexual subtext where I just thought, like, in the end they will realize they're in love and they should be together. <laughs> I just thought that's where it would end. And when it didn't, I mean, it's not a negative thing that it didn't. It's her work, uh, or her idea at least. Uh, I should say, the book is not written by J.K. Rowling, it's written by Jack Thorne. Um, I guess it was her idea and Jack Thorne wrote the actual script. Um, but still, it was her idea and she had to approve of everything in it, I'm guessing. Or I'm pretty sure. So after all the discussions about there not being diversity in her books, I thought that's where it would end. But when it didn't, it wasn't exactly a negative thing. It was more like I felt there was a missed opportunity there. I felt kind of a twinge of disappointment. What can I say? I actually thought I was alone in this, uh, or I didn't know. But I've seen quite a few reviews after I read it, and I noticed a lot of people had had the same thoughts as me, so I don't think it was just me, like, imagining that there was some kind of sexual subtext between Albus and Scorpius, but I mean, yeah, just missed opportunity. Second of all, one thing that really kind of bothered me, uh, even though it wasn't even a very big part of the book, uh, it was the fact that in the alternate realities, when Ron and Hermione aren't married, Hermione has ended up this, like, bitter old spinster? I mean... <laughs> Seriously, what the fuck? Ron had gotten married to Padma, I think, in one of the realities, and Hermione was this, like, psychopathic bitch just because she hadn't gotten married to Ron. I mean, here we have this kick-ass, strong, independent female character that we have been so proud of, and 
Then they revert her to someone who apparently needs a husband and children to stay like herself. Because if you don't have a husband and children to live for, obviously you will become a bitchy, bitter spinster. Just, ah! It was a very small part of the book, but it annoyed me to no end. And why? Just why? Why did you do that? And lastly, I'm sure I am far from alone in feeling that the thought of Voldemort having a daughter is kind of ridiculous. Laughable, even. I can't even really believe that they went there. I mean, are we supposed to believe that Voldemort and Beatrix had sex at some point? Or was it some kind of spell to impregnate her? Either way, while it's sort of funny, it's just not very believable. I mean, here we have this masterful bad guy who thinks he's going to live forever, be immortal. Why would he need a child to, like take over for, for him if that was, I don't even know what was his thought process in all of this. Also just the fact that Voldemort, or now a daughter of Voldemort, has to be like the bad guy. I mean I would have hoped that in making this eighth Harry Potter story they would do something new, like don't, don't meddle with the previous series, don't meddle with the books that we all love. Why not just do something new? Are we supposed to believe that there's only this one person in the wizarding world that have any chance of taking power and that is Voldemort? And since Voldemort is dead, well, he, he had a child. Let's make her the bad guy. It didn't even have to be something that dramatic. I thought it was a pretty good storyline that, you know, uh, Albus is this child of Harry Potter who is not living up to the Harry Potter name at Hogwarts and it's kind of teen angst and, you know, stuff like that and then something bad could happen but to reuse all of this, like it's just this one guy who is the badass of the wizarding community and there are no more, like that's, that's it. We can only think of Voldemort and Voldemort is dead so let's create a child for Voldemort. I mean it's I, I don't know. Now, I have a lot of opinions on this book, and honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that it's Harry Potter we're talking about, and I got to see all the characters that I love so much, and all the places that I love so much, and, you know, relive the magic, this book wouldn't have been very interesting to me. It, you know. But it is Harry Potter, and that's always going to mean something. And it did have its moments. I I actually enjoyed myself throughout the whole book, except the parts where Hermione was a psychotic bitch. All the other parts of the book I kind of enjoyed. And the, at times the dialogue was very funny. Scorpius was an amazing character that I absolutely loved. I read it really quickly and I don't doubt I'll read it again. I probably will several times. Uh, I just... I wish they wouldn't have marketed it as uh, the eighth Harry Potter story. To me it felt kind of more like fan fiction than anything else. That said, I can just imagine this on stage and how magical it must be and I am so jealous of everyone who got to go and see it. I would love to experience it that way and I can't imagine it being anything but amazing seeing Harry Potter on stage. So, I mean, and that is the way it was meant to be experienced. So. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and uh, yeah, are we done talking about this now?